Okay, so in this video, I'm going to try to compare and contrast mitosis to meiosis. Now on the left, we're going to have a diploid cell with 46 pieces of DNA that's going to go through mitosis to make two cells with 46 pieces of DNA. The cells start and end diploid. On the right, this cell will start with 46 pieces of DNA diploid, and it'll go through meiosis to make two cells, but then there's a second round of meiosis. The two cells divide again to make four cells, and each of them have now half the amount of DNA. So I want to show in the animation that follows this process a little more visually. Let's get started. So on the left, we're going to have a cell that will undergo mitosis, and on the right, a cell will undergo meiosis. And so before we get started, I just want to make a count. There are four strands of DNA called chromatin, loose linear strands of DNA in this animated cell to the left. And then the animated cell to the right as well is going to have four strands of DNA or chromatin to start. So I want to make a note of it. And now we're going to compare that until uh, at the end. And this key right here is going to help us visualize where the DNA came from where the chromosomes and chromatin came from. The red strands are, are, are DNA that were inherited from the maternal side of the family, from your mother, and the black strands are DNA and chromosomes inherited from the paternal, or the father's side of the family. So here we have the cell on the left is, is an interphase, the S stage of interphase. Now this is prior to mitosis. And what happens here is chromatin is duplicated. So the four strands of duplicated of DN of chromatin were duplicated to become eight. And on the right, the same thing. The chromatin is duplicated. So so far the cells really you can't tell any difference between the two processes. Now as we move on into Prophase of mitosis on the left, the nucleus will dissolve. Well, in prophase number one of meiosis on the right, the same thing, the nucleus dissolves. So far, there's really no distinction between the two. And now as we move on into prophase of mitosis on the left, we're going to see the loose linear versions of DNA called chromatin coil into these X-shaped structures called chromosomes. And on the right-hand side, the same thing, the chromatin coils into chromosomes. Now, I've numbered the chromosomes. Notice how there are two chromosome number ones, one in red that you inherited from your mother and one in black that you inherited from your father. Same thing, there's two chromosome number twos. Now, in humans, there's 46 chromosomes. So there's two chromosome 12s and two chromosome 21s and two chromosome 19s. So for simplicity, I just drew a cell with four total chromosomes. And so as we go on into prophase one of meiosis, what happens next is synapsis. And what this is, is where the two chromosome number ones are pulled next to one another by spindle fibers, and two chromosome number twos are pulled next to one another. This creates groupings called tetrads. Notice how the tetrads are made from two chromosome number ones, or two chromosome number twos. You will not see a chromosome number one paired with a chromosome number two. You, you would not see a chromosome number 13 paired with a chromosome 19. Tetrads are created from the homologous chromosomes, and we have two chromosome 12s and two chromosome 19s and two chromosome 2s. So these are what the tetrads are. So why does synapsis happen? Synapsis sets up what's called crossing over, the recombining of the homologous chromosomes. And what happens is that chromosome uh, portions of chromosome 2 in red will actually break off and reattach with portions of chromosome 2 in black. This recombines portions of our homologous chromosomes with one another. Now the same thing happens in the other tetrad. Portions of chromosome number one will break off and reattach with portions of the other chromosome number one. So the tetrads experience crossing over. Synapsis and crossing over only happen in prophase one of meiosis. This does not occur in mitosis. So now we're ready to move on into the metaphase stage. On the left, metaphase of mitosis, spindle fibers will actually pull these chromosomes just randomly to the equator or the middle line of the cell. And on the right-hand side, spindle fibers will pull these tetrads 
randomly to the equator or to the middle line of the cell. And as we now move into anaphase of mitosis, on the left, the spindle fibers will engage in a tug of war where they pull on the chromosomes where the actual chromatids are pulled to opposite ends of the cell. And on the right-hand side, anaphase 1 of meiosis, the spindle fibers engage in a tug of war and actually pull apart the tetrads. The tetrads are separated with one chromosome being pulled to the left, one chromosome of a tetrad being pulled to the right. And so now we move on into telophase of mitosis on the left. Cytokinesis, the cytoplasm begins to split the cell into halves, two cells. As that happens, the nucleus begins to regrow. And as that happens, the chromatids begin to unwind back into their loose linear version of DNA known as chromatin. Now on the right-hand side, telophase 1 of meiosis, cytokinesis again begins to split the cytoplasm in half to create two cells. And sometimes the nucleus regrows, sometimes it doesn't. In this animation, I just had it regrow for the sake of just showing that sometimes it will regrow. And if we stop and evaluate the mitosis cell on the left, this is the end, the end result. We've created two diploid cells. Now we're not finished with the cell on the right for meiosis, so we're going to continue that next. So the cell on the right is going to continue through the second round of meiosis. So now we're in prophase two of meiosis. Now the nucleus simply redissolves. Now there's no more synapses, there's no more crossing over, so the next round of meiosis, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, it's very similar to mitosis in what happens. Now we're moving on into metaphase 2. Again, there was no there, there is no second synapsis, there is no second crossing over. So we're moving on into metaphase number two of meiosis. And the chromosomes are simply pulled to the middle line or the equator of the cell by the spindle fibers. And so what happens next as we move on into anaphase number two of meiosis is that the spindle fibers tug have a tug of war and pull on the chromosomes so hard that the chromatids are pulled to opposite ends of the cell. And as we move on into telophase number two of meiosis, the cytoplasm begins to divide in a process known as cytokinesis. But now it's two cells have been divided into four. As that's happening, the chromatids are unwinding back into their loose linear version of DNA known as chromatin. And as that's happening, the nucleus is reforming in all four of the cells. So notice what you have, four cells created. Well, if we do a little end result, you notice that it's not just four cells that are created, but the four cells are haploid. Now let's look at the cell on the left. The cell on the left, the new cells have the same amount of chromatin as we started with. Now we put a note that there were four strands of DNA to start, and notice how there's four strands of DNA in the two cells created by mitosis. Now look to the right. See my note? I noted that there are four strands of DNA to start, but the new cells only have half the amount. They only have two strands of DNA. This is because of the second round of meiosis, we created haploid cells. And in the left, notice the cells created by mitosis are identical. There's two full strands of black, two full strands of red chromatin. But the cells on the right are genetically unique because of crossing over and the recombining of those uh, portions of homologous chromosomes way back in prophase number one. Each cell is genetically unique. So as we wrap this up, the cells on the left created by mitosis, they start diploid and they end diploid. But the cells that undergo meiosis on the right, they started, ha uh, excuse me, they started diploid, but they ended haploid. So here's a little practice quiz. You know, pause the video and try to answer these questions. And if you're in my biology class, you know, bring your answers on a separate sheet of paper. I'd love to check your answers for accuracy. So I hope you found the video helpful. And comment below, please. And thanks for watching.